Story time with JC. Again. A hunt for him, and they're trying to set him up and whack him, and this, that, and the third. So. You know, I've shared in the past how being robbed by one of my close boys, you know, he robbed me for 10 of them. It wasn't little money. And people like to say that that's the reason why I turned king, but they don't know the truth. If you watch my videos, you should know why I turned king. I turned king because I was set up by my own boys with a dirty ass gun in a club. Ah, but, you know, the underworld, the dark world, Always has something to say. And the dope game is a dirty game. Who would have thought that I was gonna go back to Chicago and still have to deal with the same bullshit? Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Hey, what's up guys? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell. Don't miss nothing, you know? It's all part of my story, my life. My shenanigans, some are funny, some are serious, some are sad. You know, it's called life. But we're on a serious note today because we're, we're sharing a serious story, note, whatever you want to call it. You know, I always end my videos with a positive note because I share a part of my story. And yeah, that's how it is. If you're part of my crew, Mi familia, mi raza, you already know. So I'm gonna grab the keys, gas it up. Suhansa la suburban. Let's get this shit on the road. Hey guys, what's up? So, another part of my story that has to do with Damien Cash. <laughs> Real pulls up in the dead of night. Garbage bags in the back of a fucking pickup truck. I'm looking off of the top third floor. I, we gotta go up a bunch of flights of stairs to get these bags up to the third floor. I'm thinking, no, man, we about to make some money. He gets all the way up to the top. You know, he's like, man, I was at this house and they had all this shit and they needed me to move this shit. And I was like, man, we can move anything. And unbeknownst to me, we opened these fucking bags and this shit's drier than fucking hay browner than fucking hay it still smelled like weed but this is why this episode's called bobby brown this shit was a bad feeling from the fucking jump <laughs> fresh fresh out new uh citizen i guess you could say <laughs> you know i was it's crazy because after kato passed away and I, I fell into a really bad, bad addiction uh, with the whole crack cocaine shit. Um, he came to me in, in a dream once because I was getting ready to come back to Chicago to do some, some willing and dealing, you know? And But I'm trying to help my guy out. He's back in and out of town trying to make something happen you know, to establish himself out of town. And, you know, I take on the fucking trouble of the Bobby Brown. And, uh, you know, I'm a marketing guy. I'm a sales guy. I have sold, you know, shit on a stick before, you know. Um, so we go back and forth on price and you know, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? Mind you, there's all types of drama in between, uh, you know, the gang that he belonged to prior to joining the Latin Kings and, you know, Cato had already passed away and there's just back and forth happening here. And, you know, I'm not even knowing none of this shit back then you know i still talk to some of 
uh, Kato's boys rest in peace. And, you know, I had no clue that there was a, a hunt for him and they're trying to set him up and whack him and this, that, and the third. So, you know, I'm clueless to all these this background information. So I just take it on as like a, a favor that I'm doing for him and I'm trying to pass this shit on for damn near nothing as whatever he's passing it to me on. So long story short, I take this shit around town like a grammar school show and tell. And that's what it felt like, show and tell. I go everywhere. I run up this way, run up that way, run back this way, up north, south, west, east. Where I went everywhere. I turned every stone over. Couldn't get that shit off if I paid somebody to do it for me. You know, I end up, you know, you start running out of options and you start going down to a lower tier of people that you probably wouldn't normally wouldn't do business with or not wouldn't trust you know, in normal circumstances, but you know, pressure's on, he's calling every day, man, did you do that? Did you do that? Did you do that? And I'm like, no, 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 ain't no takers yet. Ain't no takers yet. So I, just I guess you could say I was always a functioning addict. <laughs> I was always selling drugs and using drugs. <laughs> so I was a functioning addict. So I get some takers and that's exactly what they are, takers. They come look at it, try to act that's not really interested, you know. I give a few off to one of my other little guys. He fucks that all off. I'm like, oh, here we go. You know, this is the headache exactly that I did not want to get myself involved in. Now, mind you, you know, Julio and I, wrong to strong, JC, how y'all know him, Mr. Suancela Suburban, you know, Really, you know, we don't know each other that well. We know each other from being around Cato and the music. But, you know, I was kind of kept at arm's distance from him. And I always saw him around. And I knew he was a trustworthy person to Cato. And he had a lot of dealings with Cato. Um, and, you know, we went on a few capers here and there. But it was all business. And, and, and you know, he went his way. We went our way. And, um and I was getting ready to come back to Chicago. I had uh, some stuff that I had to take care of for some people. And he actually came to me in a dream. I was at a bus stop sitting down. The bus stopped. He jumped out. And we started talking. And he pretty much told me to not go back to Chicago because they were going to kill me. And... My whole thing is that I wanted to go back to that life again. I wanted to make the money. I wanted to have the cars. I wanted to have the chains again, you know, and I didn't have that no more out here because I had already, you know, blown everything down the drain. I had, everything was gone, you know, and I'll, I'll tell that story later, but everything was gone. I was actually working at a construction job and I was doing bad, you know, bad, bad, financially bad, mentally bad, just everything was bad, you know, and I shouldn't say it like that because, you know, my daughter was just born, I was learning to be a father and, you know, it was, it was, but my addiction was like so crazy, you know, a lot of, a lot of bad stuff with, with me inside and I decided to go to Chicago, go do some, you know, willing and dealing again. And I failed to realize when you're in that world, you have to constantly watch your back all the fucking time. Not only from the feds, not only from the cops, not only from your own fucking boys, but from like everybody people are trying to kill you people are trying to rob you people are trying just everything and anything and it's crazy how how much snakes and poison and bad shit is in that world that i mean they'll, they'll fucking sell you out in a second even even girls even girls do it you know what i mean someone you're messing around with her she's messing around with this other dude she tells him about you it was crazy because as soon as i got off the plane 
But like Chicago is a small town. Everybody knows what you're doing even when you don't think they know what you're doing. The underworld knows everything. They know where you're, who you're fucking with. Just by dealing with one guy, all of a sudden they kind of pretty much can square out your whole entire situation. Oh, well, if he's dealing with this guy, he got to know this guy. He's probably getting shit from this dude. And this is how all this is working out. So you think you're living a secret life, but you're not. You know, everybody's kind of in your business. A female could run and tell your pillow talk to another guy who she's friends with on the other side. And all of a sudden you've got everybody in your business and knowing what it is you're doing. And, I, you know, these were like my early beginnings of dealing with all this. Because as soon as I got off the plane, like three hours later, my sister called me. She's like, they already know you're in Chicago. And... It was just from somebody seeing me at the airport that told somebody and it just like got around, you know, and and people can sit there and, and you know, and, and talk shit why I left. But it's the best decision I ever made leaving that city and leaving that life behind. I run into these the, the, a lot of these people that that. Um that tell me, well, why do you sit here and glorify this or talk about this and all you guys talk about is all this stuff in the past. These things are important. You know, there's a kid that's gonna watch this that thinks he wants to go into the drug trade, that wants to do what it is that he sees on TV, what well, all these rappers are pushing day to day. They sell it on TV, they sell it on media, they glorify this shit. I'm not sitting up here glorifying what it is I did. I paid my debt to society. I'm still paying my debt to society right now. But I do this in hopes to reach that one kid that may be on the fence, that may be in the, on the verge of his family losing him to the streets, making a poor decision and, and thinking that this life is for him, that gang banging life, that hustling life the life that they think is cool that these people were trying to kill me still people were still trying to rob me people were still trying to get up with me even though i had been gone for a couple of years this is why when i flew in for kato's uh funeral i flew in and i flew out that was it i was in and out boom that was it because once you entangle yourself with those kind of people and that evilness and all that garbage, sometimes there ain't no coming back. But, you know, I don't know shit. I'm just JC. So, it is what it is. My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. But if you live it right, one life is all you need, homie. Stay out, stay sober, stay fresh. I'll catch you guys in a rebound.